Hey, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to look at how the builder pattern works in Ruby. My name is Caesar, and I've been using Ruby since 2008 to build all sorts of web applications, from simple MVP apps to full-blown multi-million dollar ones. In the beginning, I used to hate it because every time I would change something, I'd break some other part of the app, and every time I needed to add a new feature, guess what? I would need to change a lot of code and eventually break something. So I got really frustrated about it and started to look into how to solve both of these problems. And I eventually discovered that the solution to problem number one, i.e. not breaking stuff every time you change your code, is to test it really well using strong automated testing practices. But that's not as easy as it may sound, it took me years to fully master this process. By the way, if you're interested in learning how to do that and not spend years discovering it all by yourself through trial and error, you can check out my book, Bulletproof Ruby on Rails Applications, which I've linked in the description below. Now going back to problem number two, i.e. extending your app with new features without changing too much code, is to design it really well. And that's where today's pattern comes in. The Builder pattern allows you to hide the configuration of complex objects in a separate class. It makes sense to use it when you feel like the creation of an object has become too complex and you're repeating the process in a few different places or when you need to create an object with different possible configuration options. It's similar to the abstract factory pattern, which I've linked in the description in the sense that it too is a creational pattern and it separates those concerns. But unlike the abstract factory pattern, it doesn't build the entire object in one method call. It's more like a wrapper around the different parameters you might want to pass to the constructor. I know that might sound a bit too abstract, so let's look at some examples. To be able to show off a somewhat complex object, I'm building an HTTP response object here that can have two possible configurations. One configuration is for a JSON response and the other is for an HTML response. So the way I've laid out the structure is we have this profile controller class with two methods where each builds up a response object and then they print it to the screen. It's similar to a real controller that handles HTTP requests. In the Gang of Four book, this is what they call the director. It's the class that knows how to use the builders to get the desired object back, namely the response object. The director class doesn't have to be the actual end client like it is here. It could be a different class that the client would call and that provides a simpler interface. But in our example, this controller class acts like the director. Okay, so how does this work? Well, if we look down at the bottom of the file here, we can see that we're initializing a controller object with some params, and then we're calling the index method on it. Then, we're doing the same thing for the delete method. And if we run this code, you'll see it prints the output for both methods to the screen. But if we change the HTML format to JSON, we get something slightly different back. On the JSON format, the content type header and the body are different. The body of the delete method doesn't exist, so it's just the content type that changes here. As you can see, the controller is building a response object step by step, and then it returns the object. But how does it do that? Well, let's dissect this code. We're initializing the controller with a params hash, which gets assigned to an instance variable called params. Then, we're calling this build method with the format argument, and we're using the format to decide which builder we're going to use to construct the final object. So if the format is HTML, we're going to use the HTML response class as the builder. And if the format is JSON, we're going to use the JSON response class as the builder. The way the builder classes work is they inherit some common methods like the initializer for initializing the response object or the etag method for setting the etag header or the body method for setting and validating the body from this base response class. Inside the builder classes, we're just setting the content type header to the appropriate value. Once we have the builder object, we're calling methods on it to configure the response object. So for the index method, we're calling the body method with the params body argument to set the body attribute on the response object. In the base response class, we have a setter method for body that also validates the payload. This is another notable aspect of the builder pattern. It allows you to build correct objects by incorporating some validation logic. The idea of having correct objects is important. If you build your objects such that they are guaranteed to be in the correct state all the time, you can remove a lot of the conditionals from your code. 
Ok, back to our controller code. After setting the body, we set the content type header, the e tag header, and the status field for the response. The create method, along with a few more related methods, are all bundled in the statuses module, which is included in the base response class. It assigns a new status object to the status field of the response object. The status class is pretty simple. It consists of a code and a message, and it's got this 2s method to return the status line. After configuring the response object via the builder, we're ready to fetch the configured object. We do that by calling the response method on the builder object, and it gives us the response object back. Finally, we're printing the response to the screen via its 2s method. The response object doesn't do much either. And that is the goal. We want to factor away the complexity of the building process. Otherwise, it would need to live here in the initializer. But this way, there's not much to building the response object in its initializer. It's a simple object that just formats the body and converts its data to string. You could design your builders in such a way that they could be reused to create multiple objects using the same builder object. You'd probably need a reset feature for that. But we're not going to do that here. So there you have it. That is the builder pattern in Ruby. Whenever you find yourself in a situation that feels like you're doing a lot of work to configure an object and in multiple different places, or you notice you're creating a lot of invalid objects, the builder pattern might be just the thing you need. You can also have a look at other Ruby design patterns in my design patterns playlist, which I've also linked in the description. I hope that gave you an idea of how the builder pattern works in Ruby. Bye.